Phew, it's a hot and humid one today. It's bad enough here, but I know lots of you have to cope with weather that's considerably hotter and drier. So whether you're struggling with a miniature heat wave or a summer long slog of extreme high temperatures, here are a few tips to help you help your plants cope. It's obvious that in hot, dry weather, plants will need more water to keep them healthy and productive. But it's important to use smart watering techniques to make the most of every drop. The best time to water is early in the morning, when moisture is slower to evaporate and water levels can be recharged ahead of the heat of the day. Check soil regularly, every day if you can, and water if it's dry at finger depth. Remember, it's better to really drench the soil once every few days, rather than merely dampen the surface daily. Scrape soil into ridges around plants to create bowls to water into, or water into old pots or bottles sunk into the soil next to plants. That way the water will go directly to the roots where it's needed, instead of running away over the soil surface. Drip irrigation systems, set up on a timer, are a good option if you're not able to water daily in hot weather. Container plants can dry out very quickly and may need watering up to twice a day, especially if it's windy too. Check that the water is actually being absorbed though. You don't want it simply running down cracks between the potting soil and the container wall. Continue watering until you can see the water coming out of the drainage holes at the bottom. Pot saucers can be used to hold the water around your containers for a little bit longer. When you're done watering, it's time to lock in all that valuable soil moisture. Mulches of organic materials such as compost, leaves or grass clippings help to slow evaporation by shading the soil from the sun's rays. Mulches also help to keep the root zone cooler, thereby reducing the stress that your plants are under. You can also create a living mulch by planting densely or using rambunctious, sprawling plants like squashes to shade the soil. When temperatures rise above 85 to 90 Fahrenheit, that's 29 to 32 degrees Celsius, many plants really start to struggle. Some, like tomatoes, cope by rolling up their leaves, a natural response that reduces water loss. Many fruiting plants, including tomatoes, beans and peppers, may also drop their flowers or stop producing new ones as they try to cope with the heat. Now you may think the answer lies in fertilising your plants to make them stronger, but this only exacerbates the situation because your plants will then need more water to process all that fertiliser. A sudden flush of nutrients also signals to the plant that it's time to grow, a dangerous and stress-inducing move in soaring temperatures. So stop fertilising and concentrate on watering instead. When it's hot outside, I love to seek out some shade, and so will many of your crops. Shade your plants with anything you can get hold of. Old neck curtains or tool cloth works well, as do old white bed sheets. Purpose-sold shade cloth is available in different levels of sunblock, from 15%, 30%, 40%, right up to 100%. Your plants won't grow as fast under it, but they'll still get some sunshine and will be a lot less stressed. Pin the shade cloth into position with bulldog clips or clothes pins, using frames or hoops to support it. Many plants will benefit from some shading from hot afternoon sunshine, including cool season vegetables like cabbage and lettuce, and fruit such as strawberries. Removing plant material by harvesting it means that there's less foliage or fruits for your plants to service. Fruiting and pod producing plants especially should be harvested promptly to save the plant's energy. Finish ripening fruits that haven't fully coloured up in the kitchen to give your plants a break. They'll switch back to their productive selves once the weather cools. Extreme summer heat can be as stressful for our plants as it is for us, but give these simple strategies a go and save your plants a lot of suffering. Now I'm sure you've got lots of tips to help your plants keep their cool, so please share your techniques in the comments section below. Don't forget, the best way to keep up to speed with all our latest videos is to subscribe, so check you've done just that before heading off today. I'll catch you next time.